Hello again, Kat Rambo here, your medicine woman, and I'm here to talk to you today about microdosing. I'm getting a lot of questions about this regularly over the years, so I thought maybe it's time to put some information out there. We're going to be talking specifically about psilocybin, which is the active compound in psychedelic or magic mushrooms. So many things can be microdosed, cannabis, DMT, a bunch of stuff. Um, we're going to stick with mushrooms today because I want to give you some very specific information, and that's what I keep getting asked most about. So first, of course, the disclaimer, if you're in an area where it is illegal to be in possession of psilocybin or magic mushrooms, please be advised about that. I'm not recommending anyone take magic mushrooms. Um, for some people, it's not advised. If you are already on a psychoactive, if you have a history of psychosis or bipolar disorder, I do not recommend any type of a psychotropic. Um, that said, there is a whole cornucopia of benefits, and this is why people are asking me about um, microdosing. So I want to clear up something uh, that seems to be the biggest misconception, which is what is microdose? Why take a microdose? So a microdose is a non-perceptible dose. You cannot trip from a microdose. If you're tripping, you're not taking a microdose. You're taking a small dose. So a microdose of a magic or psilocybin mushroom is usually between 0.1 and 0.5 of a gram. So a very small amount. If you're feeling it, it's too much. I highly recommend taking it on an empty stomach. Why would someone take one at all? Uh, so it's recommended um, uh, that people try this for, uh, and there's some interesting um, literature out there now from journals like Psychopharmacology and other um, research institutions that are producing now papers and reports and studies on it that it can help with anxiety, depression, it can help you feel more alert, it can help you get off caffeine, it can help you feel more creative and more social. Um, there's a whole range of reasons why someone would want to take it. I leave it up to you to decide what matters for you. Um, most of the clients of mine that ask me questions about this topic, and I'm currently living in a place where it's not illegal, right, is um, because they're interested in the antidepressive and anxiety, but also they're really interested in, for example, their spiritual work, right? And so they want to do their mind training and they want to you know, amplify their meditations and they want to feel more connected to the cosmos, but they don't want to take a dose that's going to knock them out for a day. So um, the way you take a microdose is you would take a very small, non perceptible amount, either once a week or at most once every three days, and you would do this regularly. So one of my dearest friends was uh, microdosing when he was going through his battle with cancer. It helped him deal with the ramifications of terminal illness, uh, depression and anxiety, it helped him have more fun and feel more open. Um, clients of mine that have a lot of, of work to do that are people facing says it makes them feel more sociable and vibrant when they're working with people or playing with their kids. Um, so in areas where um, this is being studied, then uh, it turns out it may also be effective for PTSD and other types of disorders. What I highly, highly, highly recommend is two things. One, being super aware that it is a non-perceptible dose. That's what makes it a microdose. Two, having an intention and deciding why you want to take a microdose in the first place. Um, if you can do something else, and if, for example, if it's illegal in your location, then do something else, you know. Um, but uh, if it is something that you really are interested in, set your intention. And when you take it for the day, understand that it can take a little while for it to kick in. And you may or may not feel it, but you may notice yourself feeling a little bit different. It may or may not increase neuroplasticity. So it may or may not impact your emotions. So for example, I've taken non-perceptible mushroom doses and cried for the next four hours because I wasn't clear on what I was going in for and I wasn't using it to the best of its capacity. I felt amazing after I went through a whole range of, of emotions that led me to brilliant realizations about my life and really helped me move forward. But that would almost be considered the reaction to a full dose. So you can have really profound experiences if you're open to having them anyway in your life. So I would recommend setting your intention when you take your microdose. Understand that it can help you reprogram your brain, but you have to do the work for you. It can only help you. So for example, if you want to become more mindful, more conscious, you want to observe your patterns, and you want to take the microdose to help you observe your patterns in your day more clearly, then set that intention. And as you go about your day, use the tools that you've been using, learn new tools, help yourself along that way, so that it sets you up for success, right? So you don't just have a, you know, an experience that you don't understand. You, you want to be able to um, leverage and take the best advantage of what it is that you're trying to do for your brain and for your body. Uh, for your body, some people notice it makes their bodies feel better, helps them with caffeine withdrawals and all these other things. Um, helps them just feel good, you know, feel more alert. Some people say that it helps them not need caffeine because they feel energized and like focused for the day, which is great. 
So if that's what your intention is, then talk to yourself, you know, and, and tell yourself that that is what your point is for doing this and then stay focused on that. If you're taking it to get out of depression, uh, to help yourself feel better mentally, then use the tools that are there to help you with your own mental state. Um, either that's reinforcement tools from the world around you, whether that's personal mental habits, whatever it is, use them, use them, use them, and let the mushrooms help you accelerate the process of the benefit of those tools. But don't abandon the tools thinking the mushrooms are gonna do the work for you. They help you accelerate what you're doing already. So stay focused on those goals, what it is that you really wanna do, and give yourself all the tools, and all the practices, and all the focus and clarity that you need in order to make the best use of the time that you're spending with any psychotropic, right? But especially if you would decide you wanna be microdosing. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. I'm not sure what else to say. Um, there are lots of ways to take uh, mushroom microdoses. Of course, they can be made into candies, they can be um, eaten straight, you can make them into tea. Uh, some people like to mash them and put them in a little lemon juice and take a lemon juice shot with them because it helps break down the chitin. You really want to chew mushrooms very thoroughly. The reason they upset your stomach is because they're made out of the same chitin as the same material that like horns and nails and stuff is made out of. So you want to chew it very, very thoroughly so it doesn't upset your stomach. Um, and then I would recommend taking on an empty stomach because it'll impact you a little bit differently. Or if you feel that you have a very sensitive stomach, then make a tea out of it, whatever it is you want to do. But keep in mind, because the microdose is very small, it's a very small amount of the product itself. So um, I recommend just chewing it or grinding it up and then chewing it. Um, that's probably the most efficient, effective, and probably for some slightly gross way to take it. Um, again, with a shot of lemon juice or honey or whatever it is that makes you feel good about it. Uh, I love this practice personally. I feel like it's been highly effective for those really struggling with depression. Again, if you're already on a psychoactive, uh, and especially any kind of MAOI inhibitor, I highly do not recommend psychotropics. Um, but uh, if you are not taking something currently, um, then it can really help you reframe your mindset. But do engage in the practices and disciplines which encourage a healthier mindset anyway, and let the mushrooms help you along the way. Uh, other things to microdose include cannabis, uh, taking very small amounts of cannabis, um, DMT, very small doses of DMT. Um, some people like to microdose ayahuasca, that's like a single bump. <laughs> so it's a very small, non-perceptible doses. Again, if you're feeling it, it's not a microdose anymore. So you shouldn't be feeling it. Um, you're not going to trip from a microdose. If you have any other questions about this topic, then I recommend leaving me some comments. Uh, you know I read them and respond to them, so I would very much like to hear your thoughts on this topic. Have you tried microdosing before? Does this work for you? Do you like mushrooms? Is there something else you like microdosing? Um, clinical trials reflect MDMA for PTSD, which is great. Lots of acronyms and alphabets soup for us to help us feel better in our lives, right? So uh, let me know what your experiences are with this topic and if you've tried it or haven't tried it, if you're interested or think it's retarded, and whatever it is that, uh, that comes up for you as you're watching this, I would love, love to hear your thoughts. And so leave me a comment and um, ask me any questions, you know, I'll respond and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.